Guess what, everybody? What? We're doing a Mission Impossible trilogy. The first oh three. My goodness. That's right. A Cruiser Palooza? <laughs> a Mopotha Palooza? Real name. Mm hmm. Because we are, of course, talking about Mission Impossible from 1996. Oh my god, ancient history. Absolutely. This franchise has been going for 24 years then. And that's just these ones, not the show that started oh it god, as well. Yeah. yeah, It's been around forever. Since the Cretaceous era. That's it. Just dinosaurs pulling off, I don't know. <laughs> it's a, you think it's a herbivore, but it's, it's an a, omnivore. It's a car, yeah. That's <laughs> what, a, what a twist. <laughs> anyway, leave a like. Well, should we talk about how it got started? Please. <laughs> because, of course, we had the original series in the 60s. Yes. There was a revamp in the 80s, which we've actually looked at. We did a, a video on it. Which I learned this week was originally intended to just be like episode by episode remakes of the oh, original okay. with a new cast. Great. Because it was cheaper and there was a writer's strike. Oh, but okay. Then, yeah. then they, they recovered and, and it became fine. Okay, that, well, that makes sense. <laughs> yeah. And I guess Cruz was a fan of the Mission Impossible Well, he TV was, shows. because this is the first movie that he ever produced. Big fan of it as a kid. He had massive creative control. He upped to the budget. Originally, it was $40 million and he asked for 80 and he got it. Because we're in the midst of a cruiser, the start of a cruiser palooza. Moth of a palooza, <laughs> yes. <laughs> but it's such a. The Mopotha spot of bother. <laughs> <laughs> but it's such a. It's old. And I don't mean that in a bad way. Right. But I mean in the sense that, like, the first Fast and Furious movie, mm -hmm. it's so removed from what it is now. Yeah. And charting the evolution over these three first movies in particular, it's fascinating. And what's fascinating to me as well is that when I watched these movies at the cinema at the time, I was just like, a movie's a movie. You see it, you have, you have a bit of fun at the cinema. But as I've learned about and, and seen more of the each filmmaker's work, mm. like apart from the Mission Impossible franchise, uh, this one was directed by Brian De Palma. Yeah, who is fascinating choice. Right? <laughs> yeah. uh, but he was, he's a filmmaker who's all about like voyeurism mm. and paranoia yes. and weird camera angles. <laughs> and as I watched, going back into this, knowing about that, I'm like, Boy, this is a really Brian De Palma kind of film. Oh, absolutely. Like, there's there's a whole bunch of scenes where, like, conversations are just, like, just bug-eyed, paranoid people, <laughs> people shouting at each other in one drip shot. and sweat, <laughs> staring intensely at each other. Yeah, yeah, you're absolutely right. This is one of my favourites because of the reason that you mentioned in all of those things that you said. This is the only one with really intense paranoia. Uh -huh. And now the other ones have shades of it because who's who? Who's Richard Roxburgh? It's Tom Cruise but or whatever. It, but if by like six, everybody's settled into it and you're like, hey, you're probably a guy in a mask and you're probably a guy in the mask. Who cares at this point? <laughs> yeah. But in this, like he, uh, Ethan Hunt, Tom Cruise's character, he's kind of a rookie. People on this team are still amazed when you can put an earpiece in your ear and oh you can goodness. hear somebody else's conversations or you can wear a mask and you look exactly like somebody else. Do you want to talk about the masks? Yes. Because... You've got your standard... Somebody stop me. <laughs> Very good. Thank, thank you. Because some of it's just prosthetics you know i mean it's, he's it's, a senator but both of the <laughs> actors are clearly tom cruise it's, ver <laughs> it's very fortunate that a lot of people he doubles in the first half of this movie are just people who look a lot like him but wrinklier yeah exactly that's right but then you've got and the one in particular i'm referring to the john voight reveal spoilers by the way we're doing if you haven't spoilers. seen this movie from 1996 yeah. go back and watch it it's free in a lot of streaming yeah. platforms so go nuts it's about a, a spy list gets stolen that's that's the mission impossible the, the knock list and tom cruise he's got framed and he's, he's got to get it back Th there you go you caught up. But in the, in the later movies, and they emphasize this more in the next one, you can move your face around in it. It fits to you perfectly. They're indistinguishable from any other real person. It alters your voice. But in this one, I like the idea that just put it on and sit real still. Yeah, right. <laughs> Don't move a muscle. Have very particular lighting. If you can if you can sit in some shadows yeah. and look concerned, because that's mm. how your face is going to look, concerned and a little bit non-reacting. <laughs> exactly. You know? So you mentioned this before the show, but the name of the guy who created the masks, Rob Bottom. That's right, yes. This famous special effects artist who worked on like The Thing and The Howling and other things that you told me just he before the show. He worked on the, uh, the very iconic Two Weeks Lady from Total Recall where, there, where a face oh, opens course. up and a sign yep, yep, yep. That's amazing to me that practical effect because now they wouldn't do it like that they'd use a different method <laughs> it is a different and it wouldn't look as good maybe no but i still think there's some digital trickery in that shot i mm. know that it's practical elements but when he does pull it off it seems like there's a digital smear in it and i right. might be wrong uh -huh. but i couldn't find anything definitive that proved that because i think at the time maybe and again you know tom cruise still a big star you know, Mission Impossible, an, uh, a concept that people are aware of. Sure. But I don't think we're in the era where people are like, this is going to be iconic and this is yeah. going to be his defining franchise, so we'd better do a whole bunch of behind-the-scenes stuff. They're just like, yeah, it's a movie, we'll make the movie. Tom and we'll Cruise, move on. Yeah, he yeah. did Far and Away, he did Days of Thunder, he did this. <laughs> These are the three movies that he's done. Uh -huh. 
Oh yeah, here's a picture of his filmography because people will be like, I can't believe you didn't mention. His, his, all yeah, they're all There's there. All of them, There's yeah. all of them. Pick your favourite and shut your fucking mouth. We do, right. know, we do know it was the movie executive in Tropic Thunder. We're aware of it. We know. Yeah, he did a little dance. Yeah, that's right. So also I wanted to mention up yes. top, but I'm mentioning it now because we're still up top. It doesn't matter. We're doing it. That I'm going to try and replicate something from each of these movies every week, right? And so this week... Is uh, James, you're gonna get your face impaled on a on an elevator <laughs> shaft? Is that what you're gonna That's do? That's what I'm gonna do. Oh my god! Yeah. Now what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna try out the disc trick. Okay. All right. Huge shout out to Silent Magic who told me how to make this happen. I'll save it to the end though. Did I pull it off? Probably not. But we'll, we'll come along for the ride. You're all gonna right? give it a crack though, aren't you? You better believe it. Apparently a real trick. Apparently, I have my doubts. But again, there's there's barely any behind the scenes footage of this. I mean, it certainly tricked Jean Reno, didn't it? it certainly did. Sneaky, sneaky Jean Reno. What do you think about the cast of this? I like it. As I understand it, I think it upset some hardcore Mission Impossible fans at the time including, for a number of reasons, including the people from the original series as well. Who were not asked to be in this. Well, some were. Peter Graves was asked to come back as Jim Phelps. Yes, but he was but like, I'm not evil. I'm an yeah, actor. He, was, he was upset that uh, the, that Jim Phelps' character was going to take an yeah. evil turn. You know, he was he was tired of saving the world but never getting any uh, recognition yeah. for it. So he decides to turn bad and take the money and run. He was tired of sitting still for that mask mold for Tom Cruise to wear. <laughs> exactly. Uh, I think people were probably also upset that this is a movie in which a lot of the I Am team did die in the first yes. act because it, you know it, traditionally. Everybody gets out alive in the Mission Impossible movies. I love that fake out. And there's some names in it as well. Yeah. I mean, I know people are like, Emilio Estevez, where's he been? He's He was huge. Yeah, right. He was a massive star. Exactly. This is, uh, yeah, you're like, well, of course he's going to live because he's, you know. Mighty Ducks. Mighty, Mighty Ducks. Here's a list of his films. <laughs> he's a lovable character. He had an incredible catchphrase that I'm going to attempt to bring back in future. Hasta lasagna. Don't get any on you. Hasta lasagna. Don't get any on you. Loved it. Doesn't rhyme. It doesn't matter. <laughs> yeah, but I think that's a great introduction. And look, I don't even remember the first time that I saw this movie, but it's still kind of shocking that that's the way that they they open things up, mm -hmm. you know? So stunts as well are a big part of this movie. Less so than the later ones. They're, they're way more toned down than him throwing himself off. <laughs> Everything. <laughs> Everything and anything. You pick a, thing, a lot of the later movies are just him throwing himself off stuff and then yeah. they just try and patch the movie together based <laughs> on that. Pretty much, yeah. A couple of the big stunts from this, though, is the water stunt, mm -hmm. which kind of looks tame in comparison, but that's tons and tons of water. Like, if you went down, it could it could kill you. Like, I the mean, sheer force alone. One, one stuntman does cop it right in the face. <laughs> I don't know if you're having rewatched that scene. I didn't scene. see that, no. But I guess the thing that this movie is known for, and it's often parodied, Probably in a Leslie Nielsen movie because from the it's 90s. Iconic. Yeah. Probably exactly. at an MTV Movie Awards. No doubt. I'm talking about the movie Spy Hard Mason. Probably. <laughs> I do. It's probably in that. But it's the it's the heist the where Langley he's, heist, yeah. yeah. And what's interesting about that heist to me is most of it's just in that room. Yes. I mean, we see them getting in and fire trucks and whatever, but it's pretty much him dangling from wires with coins in his shoes to, to keep the balance. That's oh, what I they see. did. And it's just incredibly suspenseful they've attempted to replicate it in future movies which we will talk about yeah. but there is something about the tension in this scene yeah which just still works so well it's the sweat i'm telling you it's the signature <laughs> to palmer sweat yeah it is it's the big boxy computer yeah as big as a house that's right that's got a chair that slides out from it's underneath the, it it's the 230 megabyte diskette <laughs> upon which the knock list is is uh is copied onto i have a note here there's a there's a scene later on in the movie where they're all they're all ensconced upon the train where the finale takes place. Yes. And they have to stop the bad guys before the data is transferred. Mm. And what a the, foreign concept right? at the time. Yeah. In, the, in, the, in the movie, it takes the transfer of data from Max, the crime lord, uh, intelligence, uh, espionage, arms dealer, etc. It begins at 1 hour and 32 minutes. I love hard numbers. And the transfer is lost at 1 hour and 40 minutes. <laughs> So, in, so eight minutes. You so, could just ring somebody and read out the list. Right. It would be quicker. <laughs> but I'm like, imagine these days attempting to build a tense scene while 230 <laughs> megabytes of data is transferred. You'd be like, it seems you've caught you're caught in my trap, and oh, it's been transferred. Never mind. <laughs> That's great. Side note: Just yeah. uh, speaking of the Langley High scene. Yes. The face. Tom Cruise makes when he's dropped from the ceiling and nearly hits the floor. 
Just it's just what a face. <laughs> just go well, back and watch it if well, you haven't. Is it an intensity? Is it scared? What is it? It's, all of, it's every emotion oh, really? all put together. Yeah. yeah well, yeah. that's Tom Cruise, isn't it? Just yeah. every it's emotion. A little, it's a little bit of scared. It's a little bit tense. It's a little bit. I love this job. <laughs> you know what I mean? Hasta lasagna. That's right. And all that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And I know you could look at this high scene. Yes. And I'm sure I've made these arguments before. Why not have a camera in the room? Why not have a guard that's watching the entire time? Why does the computer work when there's nobody supposedly in the room? Exactly. If I was the guy who worked in that room, I would look up at the ceiling every goddamn day. As <laughs> soon as I came out, I'd be like, oh, look at this big tall ceiling I've got for some reason. You'd look down at the floor, up at the ceiling, because either way it's reflective, you'd see what's going on. Yeah. Right. You're right. You could put a big, heavy wooden door in front of the computer. Whatever. But at the same time, whatever measures were put in place, you can write around that. So if there was a camera, he'd he'd block the camera. If there was a guard, he'd swap him out or whatever. Yeah, but I mean, the necessary elements of a heist sequence or a heist movie is you spell out the obstacles... And then they, the characters build big plans to counter the obstacles. Yes. And then stuff gets in the way, like a rat or a knife. Or a Frenchman. Frenchman. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he had that knife the whole time. It was Sacre him. blue. Anyway, I love the train chase, though. And I feel like the train chase is one of those things they definitely would have done practical now. Because this, yeah. was, uh, this was a skydiving machine, like tilted sideways to get the rushing air effect. Oh, I Tom, see. At, at Tom Cruise's request, because he was like, I've already done skydiving and this is what I'm going to do. Ha <laughs> ha! Yeah. And there's a bit of like green screen, blue screen jankiness to it. Yeah, especially when uh, Voight and Cruise leap onto the helicopter struts and they're kind of totally, like... Totally, yeah. It's, they're struggling through the helicopter in the tunnel and all yeah. that sort of stuff. It's like, well, that's very obviously took place on a, on yes. a soundstage. But, you know, it's a real jump. You yeah, know what I mean? Right? Uh-huh. It's just in front of a green screen or blue screen. Again, I think it still works. And mm. I think for the most part it holds up. And even though it is like a CGI helicopter bobbing and weaving... I still think it's great. I still think it's an absolutely bloody cracking conclusion to the movie. And I love that John Voight gets mashed like the rotten potato that he is. Just <laughs> crunch. I had a thought, actually. Of the characters that died in this movie, who do you think is ripe for a return? Well, we know one of them is returning who didn't die. Kittredge? Yeah, He's coming Kittredge back is for coming back. seven and eight. Apparently. That's crazy, right? Right? But I reckon bring back Estevez... Like, oh, I yeah. mean, Has he got, he's got an eye patch. Or a, a, an enormous whistly hole through his entire <laughs> head, sure. But, I, you know, and look, we just saw the, the back of John Voight disintegrate, so maybe the front half of him's still alive. He's, like, 80 and insane, though, what about isn't he? Ma- what about Emmanuel Bert? Maybe she could Sure, come yeah, back. good choices she all around. She got shot, maybe she's, she has made a quick escape at the end. You're right, there's, there's a few of them you could definitely bring back, and maybe they will at some point. Hannah, the drunk on the stairs, that oh she could goodness. bring her back. These are wonderful choices that you've made. I mean, she blew up. Yeah, but masks, <laughs> yeah, whatever. Yeah, probably masks, yeah. No, nobody's off limits at this point. I, I think what this does, right, and I know that it's people who are fans of the original series didn't love it at the time, and it wasn't massively reviewed well. It was like, uh-huh. this is good enough. I think it's clearly stood the test of time over the decades that it's been I around. I think so, more than some of the others, one of the others, <laughs> the next one. <laughs> yeah, that's right. But I think it does get the core of the original show right. It just kills more people. Oh, for sure, yeah. You know? uh-huh. It does your mask and your gadgets and your Mr. X and your fake rooms and whatever. Yeah. It does all of that. And I think say what you will about this one or the subsequent ones, the next one. <laughs> uh, what I think it, it is, these movies are good at is kind of like getting a director in and just showcasing what they're good at. Yes. And going like, Tom Cruise I think has gone, I want to make some spy movies. Yeah. And here's some directors that I love. What's your best take on a spy movie? And I think all of them have sort of nailed that in their own way. I completely agree. Now, look, I'd like to also wrap up each of these uh, episodes that we're doing, talking about the evolution of Ethan Hunt's hair in relation to the character itself. Okay, well, before we do that, uh, I would just like to talk about uh, maybe something that I remembered from this movie, but the depth of it didn't hit me until... Uh, we I, I rewatched it. It's what people thought the internet was in 1996. <laughs> because in this movie, the the only thing I think that doesn't hold up, the stunts are still incredible, and the tension, you know, is is you can feel it's palpable tension you can sure. feel in all these scenes. But there is a scene in this movie where Tom Cruise, Ethan Hunt needs to do some internet sleuthing, and so he goes on Usenet. Was that a, a thing? 
Yeah, Usenet's a thing. Okay. But it's it's at the point where the internet wasn't really available for everybody. No. Not everybody had it in their homes, in their phones, in the tablets, in their cars, in their fridges. And so somebody's friend's dad might have had a computer from work that right, had it. <laughs> exactly. And so basically Brian De Palma was basing what the internet was and what his friend's dad had <laughs> at his work because like and it was it was just kind of like what what do people think the internet and you couldn't look it up on the internet what the internet was <laughs> you had like. You to open a book. Right? <laughs> So it was just sort of some guesses. At this point, you think about the internet. Like, why not a constantly repeating beep from your search engine when you when there's no results from it, you know? <laughs> that wouldn't get annoying. Imagine in 2020, every time you got a new message or alert, it was just a constantly repeating endless beep until you access <laughs> every email. Just a, just a cacophony of beeps. And I get 10 point, emails in a minute. <laughs> at one point, Ethan guesses that the terrorist arms dealer espionage king slash queen Max might be found at (laughs) max.com. But I've written all in caps, the Book of Job discussion group, (laughs) where you go and in a variety of different languages, you can send messages to people about various chapters and verses of the Book of Job. And I've written here, sending a random message to a Max who may or may not exist on a Bible discussion group might be the biggest, pardon the pun, Hail Mary long shot I've ever seen in a movie. <laughs> so everything else in this movie holds up this ridiculous. But you got to also remember the people using the internet were five dads of friends of someone you knew from school yeah, yeah, yeah. and Max. So That's was, true. you're sending out six emails, are you? That's true. And the right. reason it's taking so long because he's waiting for the data to transfer. And Max is probably like, ooh, an email. I don't get a lot of those. <laughs> this beep, is exciting. Beep, 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 beep. Yeah. Fascinating stuff. <laughs> Let's, oh, let's do, so let's talk about that. Let's go back to hair. Hair is important. Okay, so I think you could chart the evolution of the Ethan Hunt character mm-hmm. from his hair. And in this particular movie, he's only a few months into the IMF field. Yes. Because he was an army recruit. Right. That's how he spent his time. I think that's why his hair is that way. Mm. That's why he's locked into it. Yeah, he's got a haircut that you can kind of set your watch by. That's right. Like a traditional army guy. And you watch that kind of disappear as the movies go on. Like he's very... By the book, by the rules, he feels like he's hard done by and he's been betrayed, which he, which he often is. Mm-hmm. But also, he doesn't really seem to care that much about other people in this movie mm. compared to what he does later. This is more of a self-serving, self-preservation Ethan Hunt than yeah, what we right. get later. It's- yeah, yeah. I mean, in this movie, he just lets John Voight just tumble over the side of a bridge. <laughs> he doesn't dive in after him. Did you no. notice in the future versions would absolutely just leap in there, you know? He'd fly a helicopter down and <laughs> pick him up with one muscular arm. That's right. But there's no real gunfights in this. There are, like, there are two bullets fired in this entire yeah, movie, which is wild. Crazy. He gets beat up by 60-year-old John Voight. Yes. And then, you know, in the more recent movies, it's him and Henry Cavill just beating the shit out of a bathroom. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, bare-fisted. And here he's getting, like, 58-year-old John Voight is besting Tom Cruise. Right. I just think it's fascinating that you watch all the tricks and things that he absorbs over the, over the decades. Mm. You know what I mean? Yeah, right. So, look, I think the hair, and I know it's probably a bit of a long shot, the hair of Tom Cruise tells a story in these movies. Yep. In particular in the next one. Yeah. And look, special shout out again. I'll give you a little time code. One hour and 39 minutes. Ethan Hunt uh, on the top of the train gives us some wicked Beatlemania hair. Just go back and watch it. You'll you'll definitely appreciate it. Uh, just a little, a uh, couple of little pieces of trivia. Uh, just from the uh, the opening sequence. Trivia, it's trivia. Our trivia segment, trivia, it's trivia. Thank you. Uh, based on the little uh, info cards we get on each of the uh, the, the IMF Force uh, members, uh, Ethan Hunt's UC alias, whatever that is, is Philippe Duchette. <laughs> What? He's the littlest douche. <laughs> I don't know what it means. Is that a little uh, production, uh, little production in joke? There? I don't know. You might be right. Tom Cruise, maybe he was like, "This is a good joke on myself." <laughs> maybe, maybe. I've got a good sense of humor. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and something I'd forgotten. Uh, his uh, his mother's name is Margaret Ethan Hunt. Oh yeah, and we see the parents in this. Yep. Where do they go in the remaining movies? They get arrested and then they. He grew up on a farm or something. They live yeah. on a farm. Yeah. yeah. Great stuff. It is the best. This holds up, man. Absolutely it's a good movie. does, yeah. Internet aside, but that's still yeah. that's still a curiosity to me. I'm not turning off because of the internet. No, that's you know true. What I mean? yeah, 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 yeah. Anyway, Just he, pretend he's looking through microfilm or something. That's, it's fine. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. Don't even worry about it. Yeah. yeah. Anyways, here's me trying to replicate that thing. You ready? Huh? 
Oh my god, you did it! I did. Second take. I can't believe you didn't do it, James. You loser. <laughs> All right. Next week, of course, we are coming back for MI two. It's a real shift in tone. <laughs> yeah, I thought you were going to say another sh word, but yeah, it's uh, it's something else. Mm, We'd love you to swing by. But look, if you love these videos, which some do and don't, depending on how they (laughs) interpret the title, you can actually get them early at bigsandwich.co. Sign up. It's nine bucks a month. If you want to, you know, you can be hard up for a buck. That's absolutely fine. We also do a bonus podcast. Movie uh, commentaries. Movie commentaries, ad-free feed, bunch of stuff going on there that you can check out. Ah, it's so delightful over there. That's right. It's it's loose as a goose. Loose as a bloody goose, mate. But it's a very firm release schedule of... (laughs) content. It actually is, yeah. yeah. We're, not, we're not dicking around on that, are, are no, we? that's right. Yeah, I mean, we are, but, you know, the content comes out of the, the time it should. That's right. Anyways, I'm at Mr. Sunday Movies on Twitter. I'm at Wikipedia Brown on Twitter. I hope everybody has a great Mission Impossible in life surviving all the terrible things that are happening. Me too. That's the real Mission Impossible, isn't it? Absolutely. And, and as, this movie. Uh, as always, as I always say, hasta lasagna. <laughs> Don't get any on you, folks. <laughs> yeah, yeah good, good. Makes about, sense. Yeah. yeah, yeah, makes sense. Okay, goodbye. Goodbye.